Well, let's take you to Edo State, where tensions uh, between the governor and the deputy governor have erupted again. Earlier today, Philip Shoaibu, the deputy governor, was locked out of his office at the government house in Benin. Shoaibu, who was accompanied by his security aides, waited for hours uh, for answers as to why his office was locked with chains and padlocks. Last week, civil servants and other appointees of the deputy governor were evicted through a notice forwarded to the permanent secretary's office of the deputy governor. But Shoaibu has said in a previous interview that he has not, uh, well, he's yet to receive uh, the notice. I am I come office now and here yeah, and the gate is locked. I am part locking the building. They part locking. I'm part locking the gate in the chain and put the outer gate and the inner one they part lock and chain it. The governor said they should lock it. Like I'm using the office for something else. I have not moved to anywhere. Nobody has given me letter to move to anywhere. I am nobody has given me letter. So if governor say I've moved, I have not moved. I have not moved. The governor did not give me letter. Nobody has given me letter to move. So how will I move out of my office? And the and the gate is locked. I'm bad locked. So let me I don't know. So to call, I call the governor is not picking. So you call the governor that I didn't move because I didn't get any letter to move. Only the civil servant got letter to move. I'm told that the civil servant were giving letter from the office of uh, uh, HOS to move out of this place. But me, I didn't get any letter to move. So I'm here. They should come and open the gate, please. I called the governor that I'm at the gate. Please come and open the gate. Let's bring in the rise analyst Frank Titi for more on this story. Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's looking so ridiculous. Uh, well, this matter has been on for quite some time. And then the deputy governor had taken the case to court at some point, but for the uh, intervention of uh, certain uh, chieftains of the PDP. So he had to then uh, <laughs> withdraw the case from court. Should he have just kept the case in court? I mean, what other options are left for him? It's looking so helpless. Very helpless and uh, shameful that that is a deputy governor, mm. a constitutionally recognized deputy governor of a state of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. He didn't have to appear that helpless like the way he was and then uh, making that kind of call, perhaps for reasons of best known to him, trying to maybe paint the governor black because he is a man with immunity, state immunity, not immunity granted to him by Governor Vaseki. He also had state protection, so and has as, he has a right to access his office. And if a, a such a powerful figure, a constitutional figure like a deputy governor approaches his office and is locked with key, he should be angry and then order his men to break it up. And then let's see which governor or which authority, which force will now mm -hmm. issue a counter order, you know, restraining the deputy governor particularly of a Dostey from going into, into his office. So perhaps I'm not so impressed that Philip Schwabel is sounded and appeared so helpless in the manner, that, forgetting that he, he's, not a, he's not an assistant governor. He's not appointed by Governor Basaki. He's a deputy governor in, of a Doe state. And, and, and so, again, we, governor, deputy governors have often been at the receiving end of the recklessness of governors since uh, the Second Republic of, uh, of our democracy. And, and that's very bad. And I, I don't want to believe uh, mm. because of this you know, notion that deputy governors are spare tires. That is very incorrect. Mm -hmm. Because Section 193 of the Constitution gives executive functions to the deputy governor expressly by saying that there are certain policies of government that cannot actually be, be, be created, driven, or, 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 or pursued without the governor meeting with the deputy governor and commissioners. That also applies to 
you, you, you know, in other functions of the, of the governor itself in terms of coordination, and not only policies, but with regards to, you know, express services of government. So, I don't understand that, uh, a, 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 I mean, this trend, you know, of governors, you know, overriding the mm -hmm. national, I mean, the state house of assembly, and then on flimsy excuses, you know, making the gov deputy governor appear to be so helpless. You mm -hmm. know, I've seen very flimsy excuses given by governors in, in impeaching deputy governors. It's as if deputy governors exist at their mercy. The mindset must change. Let's, just, let's understand something. A governor is as helpless as the way uh, 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 Philip Shabu appeared. Yeah. The reason right. is, and I'll, and I'll sign an example. In, in the case of um, Governor Chris Ngige, as he then was in Anambra State, his security details were simply withdrawn, and uh, uh, one fellow we locked him up. One, uh, you know, one fellow mm. just locked him. I don't want to mention his name. Mm. Locked him up. A governor, a sitting governor, and then asked him to sign papers, and then they declared that he has been sacked. You mm. know, so, so the governor must also realize that what he is doing now, and again. The express irresponsibility of state state officers, and I'm talking about those who work for the state, not those who work for Basaki, not those who work for uh, those state, those who work for the Nigerian state. Where is the Department of State Services? Where are the the the, the, the policemen? And then you allow that kind of thing, that kind of humiliation on a a deputy governor that you are meant to protect. Somebody needs to answer to this. Frank Tete, mm. is this impunity gone too far? Is it a reflection of the impunity that you find across board? Whether you're talking about uh, Edo State in this instance, I mean, similar situations have happened in other parts of the country. Right. You have Ondo State uh, brewing right now. There seems to be a no love lost situation between the Ondo State governor who's just and returned, you know, and his uh, deputy. How do you resolve this crisis of confidence? How do you resolve this personality clash in a way that would not affect the constitutional duties of those involved? See, we have to have responsible people running our government. Right. Now, see, let me tell you, I'll trace a sort of psychosocial, uh, you, you know, basis for what is happening. And that is the fact that you, if you see where, if you see states where there are crises between the governors and the deputy governors, as a result of having over ambitious deputy governors. And mm. that happens when a governor, as a, a candidate for, for governorship, I mean, as it then was, mm. did, I mean, did not have the prerogative of picking and choosing his own uh, deputy, deputy governor. When it is imposed on him by a sort of political arrangement, and then the deputy governor has this sort of quiet ambition that he is a governor in waiting, and that he actually is as popular as the governor, and that he even contributed to making the governor to win election. There's always crisis. So the Ganduje, the Ganduje approach is that, look, if you want to enjoy peace as a deputy governor say nothing do nothing and then be a yes boy or yes man to your to, to, to the governor but that's not how it should work but we've seen any time any deputy governor exercises uh, some sort of uh, independence in trying to you know, you know assert himself the governor feels threatened we've seen that happen I, I recall one governor son I mean one deputy governor the son of Yobuchi who was just there with the, the governor Sullivan Chime at that as he then was at that time mm. didn't quite like him and then simply he asked the the uh, state house of assembly to impeach him because he was keeping chickens. Uh, why wouldn't he be keep, keeping chickens? Because mm -hmm. he 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 wasn't having any job to do. So they actually set up a panel. The state house of assembly mm -hmm. set up a panel to say, look, you have been accused for rearing chickens for in the this, in the state house. Why why wouldn't my rest state chickens? Because the governor didn't assign any duties to him, and then they impeached but him. But is it not the prerogative of the governor to assign or not to assign responsibilities to the deputy governor? It is a in his own it's personal. Not, it, well, it's the First and it's first a constitutional duty. Right. So when a governor refuses to assign duties to the deputy governor, he is actually he is breaching the constitution, and no, that can constitution. go as misconduct. Right. The House of Assembly that is always that is supposed to always protect the deputy governor we are always the first. I mean, the House of Assembly are always the first that go after the deputy governor for daring to challenge the governor. So it shows you how powerful the governor is because mm -hmm. the governor at those times, the governor because he holds the post that pays the, the the state House of Assembly. You know that problem. Nevertheless, so 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 you're asking for a solution. The solution mm -hmm. is this. You know, first, allow the governors indeed to pick their running mates. Don't come and impose it on them. When you do that, the governor feels threatened. When you say, and then a deputy governor like Philip Schreiber, who mm. whose ambition to become governor is, is, is an open secret. That 
I mean, it's an open book. And uh, the governor would wonder, every governor, whether you like it or not, every governor has an ambition to actually contribute to determining who oh, succeeds him. Okay, and then when yes. you see, it even happened to uh, Lucia Gobasanjo as president. You mm. needed to see how he moved state powers against his own vice president, took away his <laughs> private jet, ensured that he humiliated him just because the man exercised the rightful ambition to be president. And to date, the man hasn't been president because of that singular opposition that the person uh, made against him. Okay, then perhaps, Frank, perhaps the challenge here is that th that part of the Constitution says uh, the governor can or should appoint duties and responsibilities mm -hmm. to the deputy governor at his discretion. Maybe that's a challenge, but leave that on, on the one side, or you want to react to that? Now, let me tell you, Section 193 makes it mandatory. Whenever the law uses the word shall, it's mandatory, it's not optional. Mm. Shall hold meetings with the deputy governor. We're not disputing that. No, no, that's no, not, no, no, that's no, not, no, that's no, not the bone of contention. That is a yeah. duty that the deputy governor has. It's not a spare tire. And then the governors, the deputy governor should throw away this victim mentality. Now, let's talk of about the DSS. Let's talk sing, about the Department of, of State uh, Service, Frank. The governors. Frank, Frank, I appreciate the passion. But then let's talk about the DSS, uh, the Department of State Service. Uh, shouldn't they be answering at this time? And we should be questioned now. Of course, you see, you see, we have a president. You, know, you see, father of the, uh, the, the the country. You know, the expectation is that the president should be angry. That it, because he, he took an oath of office, so he sworn to, to, to protect the constitution, to uphold the constitution. There is a deputy governor who has immunity. He's not a deputy governor to uh, 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 Governor Obaseki. He's the deputy governor of a do state that is being humiliated. The that DSS is being are to him. What should they be doing now? What we should be answering? Well, there is dereliction of duty already on the part of the DSS. DSS is failing woefully to, to protect a, an officer, a constitutional officer like deputy governor. They are they, they, they claim, that, of course, they're supposed to be state security services, but they, they work for the state along with some other state institutions. They mm. don't work for President Tinubu. They work to ensure that the Nigerian state, as it is, ha, the, the, that amorphous body, that, mm. that Leviathan is kept, you know, intact. And in so doing, and they are guided by law. So the, the question is, so can B Governor Basaki now tell the DSS to do wrong and it will do wrong? Governor well, Basaki will tell the DSS violate the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria and they will do so? That's shameful. The question, president should issue is, somebody a query. Yes, indeed. I mean, I wonder what kind of intervention Mr. President should be making at this point. And I mean, first, the, the president states, should be embarrassed. Yeah, Very embarrassed. Be embarrassed but look, look, what kind this, of constitutional... This, this transcends right. party lines. Okay. It's about preservation of Nigeria. You see, democracy has a cost. And, it's, it, it, and, and it also has a culture. The culture is that absolute respect for the constitution. That's why we refer to it as constitutional democracy. It is not Tinubu's democracy. It's not Governor Basaki's democracy for the Edo people. Right. It is constitutional democracy. And Tantate. everything must mm -hmm. be done possibly to ensure that the rule of law and must be respected. And we'll what's happening to. in those states is terribly embarrassing to Nigeria. We'll, ha we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much. Well, Philip Shoaibo actually says he's reported to the DSS and all concerned uh, security agents. Uh, to wade into this. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much.